I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this system led by what's called the Federal Reserve is working exactly as it's designed to work to benefit a few at the expense of the rest. When we start thinking about price increases, I think it's always a good place to start to just think about the basics of supply and demand. Uh, Now, like you said, this is where we're going to school here, so hang with me. But I did a little research on dairy farms in the Central Valley, and essentially because water supplies are being diverted to other parts of the state, dairy farmers are having to sell their herds or switch their production from dairy over to almonds and things that you know aren't producing milk, all right? And so in California, y'all are seeing just a flat line or even a decrease in the supply available for dairy products on a local level, right? So most folks, this is not too complex of an idea, but when you've got a reduced supply of anything, this is going to create a tendency for prices on that good to rise, all right? So decreased supply, we would expect to see a little bit of a price increase, but not that much, okay? So when that happens, let's consider what's happening on the demand side of the equation. Well, I pulled up some data about the state of California, and back in 2020, Incomes on average increased. Now, you ladies might not have felt this, but the numbers say increased by about $8,000 per household. Yeah. Well, where'd that money come from? Did all of a sudden uh, we have some kind of boom in productivity or wages? What's going on here? So we have that chart that you gave us, the median household income in California. In California, in the last decade or so, income has gone up by $30,000. So the question is, is why? Why is that dramatic of an increase? Right. And that really gets to some of the root causes of what's going on here. So when we have increased income, whatever the source, you got increased bidding power and sellers know this. And so prices increase accordingly. Uh, We see the same thing happening at the college level when, for example, uh, students walk in the door with the capacity to have a lot of government loans. Well, this isn't just cornerstone. This is across the country. Colleges know that you've got more cash to wave around when you walk in the door. And so we see escalating prices in uh, college tuition. It's just another example of where we have what's called demand side inflation or demand side price increases. So I hope that makes sense, but I'd love to clarify if there would be an easier, better way to say it. Sure. So as prices go up, it's because there's increased money supply. That's that's kind of what I hear you saying. That's what we're getting at. And okay. as we talk about that, that gets us to the main culprit that most folks have no awareness of at all. So then the question becomes is what happens to the people at the lower end of the income scale that aren't seeing those increased wages but prices are still going up and then it's they're left thinking, well, where's my piece of the, of the pie, if you will. Sure. Well, what you're touching on, and again, this is where you got to have your pencil paper ready. uh, This is what economists call the Cantillon effect. Uh, That's if you're spelling on your notebook, it's C-A-N-T-I-L-L-O-N. The Cantillon effect has been um, observed when we've got increased money supply coming from our financial system. And those people who are the first recipients of this new money creation, they're usually pretty well connected. They usually have pretty quick and easy access to new credit, and they're not taking out a couple thousand bucks to get a note on a used car. These are 
institutions, individuals who are taking out loans in the millions and sometimes billions to bid on, let's say, vast tracts of real estate or in a new factory in an industry that the government has just promised a boatload of money to. And these folks, these well-connected individuals, wind up purchasing assets, property, businesses. And now let's see what happens down the road from that. Well, if you're a middle-class person, you're one of the later recipients of some of this new money, or maybe you're just working hard and you are advancing in your wages. You're in that sort of middle group of Americans. You hear that oh, there's some new company, there's some sort of real estate investment that's taken off by 15 or 20% this last year. Maybe I should get into that game. Maybe I should go ahead and invest in that particular stock that the well-connected have already started to make gains on, right? So you jump in as a middle-class person and you see your net worth go up a little bit. Well, as the prices for all these things, real estate, um, farm prices, this creates a situation where the last folks to receive income increases, a little bit of a wage bump, they are now looking to become home buyers. They're now looking to purchase a car. They're now looking to send their kid to school. And all of these prices have been bid up ahead of time. And it makes it increasingly difficult for those in the lower middle class and especially the poor to have any hope of affording these things. And I'm here to tell you that that process is not an accident. A lot of times I hear folks say, gosh, this this system that we're looking at is broken. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this system led by what's called the Federal Reserve is working exactly as it's designed to work, to benefit a few at the expense of the rest. And I want us to get into that a a little bit more because we're kind of at the beginning here, but I want people to understand that Capitalism is often looked at as being the scapegoat of what this problem is. Mm -hmm. But what Jeff is describing is not actually free markets at work. This is called crony capitalism. This is a, a deep form of corruption that causes these sorts of things. 